Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Jesus said, the first commandment is this. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things for which our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. One hot summer afternoon, while Abraham was sitting by the entrance to his tent, near the sacred trees of Mamre, the Lord appeared to him. Abraham looked up and saw three men standing nearby. He quickly ran to meet them, bowed with his face to the ground and said, please come to my home where I can serve you. I'll have some water brought so you can wash your feet. Then you can rest under a tree. Let me get you some food to give you strength before you leave. I would be honored to serve you. Thank you very much, they answered. We accept your offer. Abraham went quickly to his tent and said to Sarah, hurry, get a large sack of flour and make some bread. After saying this, he rushed off to his herd of cattle and picked out one of the best calves, which his servant quickly prepared. He then served his guests some yogurt and milk together with the meat. While they were eating, he stood near them under the tree, and they asked, where's your wife, Sarah? Oh, she's right there in the tent, Abraham answered. One of the guests was the Lord, and he said, I'll come back about this time next year, and when I do, Sarah will already have a son. Sarah was behind Abraham, listening at the entrance to the tent. The word of the Lord. The psalm for this morning is Psalm 15. Let us read it responsibly by half verse. Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle? Whoever leads a blameless life and does what is right. There is no guile upon his tongue. He does no evil to his friend. In his sight, the wicked is rejected. He is sworn to do no wrong. He does not give his money in hope of gain. Whoever does these things. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the church in Colossae. The Apostle Paul most likely quoted a Greek hymn popular in this region as shown in the italics. Although it's hard to tell in English, the first section is poetry. Hear now what the Spirit is saying to God's people. The sun is the image of the invisible God, the one who is first over all creation, because all things were created by him, both in the heavens and on the earth, the things that are visible and the things that are invisible, whether they are thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. He existed before all things, and all things are held together in him. He is the head of the body, 
the church, who is the beginning, the one who is firstborn from among the dead, so that he might occupy the first place in everything. Because all the fullness of God was pleased to live in him, and he reconciled all things to himself through him, whether things on earth or in the heavens, he brought peace through the blood of his cross. Once you were alienated from God, and you were enemies with him in your minds, which was shown by your evil actions. But now he has reconciled you by his physical body through death to present you before God as a people who are holy, faultless, and without blame. But you need to remain well established and rooted in faith and not shift away from the hope given in the good news that you heard. This message has been preached throughout all creation under heaven. And I, Paul, became a servant of this good news. Now I'm happy to be suffering for you. I'm completing what is missing from Christ's sufferings with my own body. I'm doing this for the sake of his body, which is the church. I became a servant of the church by God's commission, which was given to me for you in order to complete God's word. I'm completing it with a secret plan that has been hidden for ages and generations, but which has now been revealed to his holy people. God wanted to make the glorious riches of this secret plan known among the Gentiles, which is Christ living in you, the hope of glory. This is what we preach as we warn and teach every person with all wisdom, so that we might present everyone mature in Christ. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. As Jesus and his disciples went on their way, Jesus entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. The Gospel of the Lord.
words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart to be always acceptable to you, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. It's good to see all of you. I'm just so happy in the middle of July, it's hot, and you're here. I'm just, I'm very excited, and I'm excited about all you online as well. It's just wonderful. Thank you for being here. And for the person who rode her bike today, even better. Wait, two of you rode your bike today, I think. Philip, did you ride today? Nice. Excellent. Good. I dream of that one day. It would be long from Bradenton to here, but it would be a lot of fun. So have you heard about the one, about the guy who joined the uh, monastery where they could only say two words per year? Have you heard this one? All right, so good, you're about to. So uh, a man joins uh, uh, a monastery. He's trying to drop out of society. He wants to study at the feet of Jesus and let all things uh, go away, as will be heard in our gospel lesson. So he, he joins this monastery, and they said, there, we've got a couple rules, and one of the rules is you can only say two words per year, and it's on your anniversary. You'll sit down, you'll meet with us. You've heard this, right? Yeah, John's already laughing. Good. I should have you tell it, brother. Okay, so... Uh, <laughs> So he says, that's fine, that's fine. I'm just trying to drop out of society and all that. So he starts, does the full year, sits down with the abbot and with the vice abbot, and they said, uh, you are now allowed to say two words. And he says, bed, hard. Okay. So then he does his service for the next year, and he sits down with the abbot and the vice abbot, and they say, you're allowed, now it's been two years, you're allowed to say two words, and he says, Food, bad. So he works then for the whole rest of the year. He sits down with the vice abbot and with the abbot, and they said, it's your anniversary. It's been your three years. What are your two words? And he says, I quit. <laughs> and the abbot looks to the vice abbot and says, that's good. You've been complaining. Nothing about complaining since you've been here. Okay, so there we go. So that's the joke. I should have, and I shouldn't have, I should have just left that alone. Okay, good. <laughs> All right, so uh, the reason why I bring up this story about uh, the joke, about the monastery and all that, is that uh, the reading for today with Martha and Mary, have you, have you heard this one before? The uh, Martha and Mary, and Martha says, Jesus, do you not care that my sister is doing nothing, right? I just... I love Martha. Uh, so this passage is used, along with a few others, to talk about monastic life and for people to drop out of their busy society and to head up into an enclave, you know, some sort of thing where you can drop out and study and sit at the feet of the Lord. Um, one of the problems with the monastic community is that you head in with this expectation that now I get to pray six times a day and I get to uh, put myself into God's word. But all of the stuff you had to do outside of the monastery, you still have to do inside the monastery. You still have to eat, you still have to clean, you have to do all those things. But you're in with a bunch of strangers and you have no money. And so everything you do has to be done by the people in the monastery. Uh, my undergraduate uh, university, St. Martin's University uh, in Olympia, Washington, has a monastery. It was founded by monks in 1895, uh, Benedictine, Benedictine monks. Uh, and so the nunnery and the monastery are there, and they're still functioning. And some of my favorite professors were, um, were monks. Uh, and it's, it's awesome, but they often talk about how the university takes the place of a lot of things that uh, back in the old days they would have to take care of themselves. And so uh, for many of them, they're able to sit back and enjoy, but um, still they find that it's a small amount of their day where they're actually able to do what they were hoping to do. So I'm a part of the Barna Research Panel for Pastors. And I don't know if you've heard of Barna, um, like Pew, they do, they do research. And then they publish their research. Uh, folks who are interested in publishing something and they want to know what pastors or other people think, they contract with them and then they send out questionnaires. And so one of the benefits of being on the panel is that I get the results. I get to hear what the results have been. And so uh, last week, the most recent one that we did, they sent out their surveys, uh, their findings to us early, and it was that 58% of full-time seminary-trained pastors in the United States, and pastors, 
Um, so Episcopal Church, Methodist, Presbyterian, Roman Catholic, it, it's, it's all of uh, more than just the main line, but we're all in. 58% of us on a weekly basis find zero time for prayer, for reflection, for meditating on God's Word. It appears as if the job of ministry gets in the way of ministry. We are distracted and we are busy by many and worried by many things. And so here is this passage with Martha. Uh, now, there are many reasons why I love Martha. Uh, one of them is that she talks very boldly and frankly to Jesus, and I think that we are invited as well in our prayer life to speak boldly and directly uh, to him. So the interesting thing for me is that we have, uh, Martha's mentioned a few times in Luke, uh, also in the Gospel of John. And John and Luke don't share a lot in common, but they have this together. And so uh, in John chapter 11, Jesus arrives because his friend Lazarus has died and has been dead for many days. The first thing, Martha, by the way, is the first one to appear to him. You know what he said. Uh, she walked up to him and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. I love that. that is, that's just awesome. Uh, the first thing, not welcome back, not I'm so sad, Jesus, can you help me with this? None of that, or none of this, uh, oh Lord, to you all things are created through you, all things seen and unseen. None of that. If you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Uh, it's just forceful. It's right there. I'm sorry? It's, yes, the subtext, thank you, uh, is the subtext is, she told Jesus, it's your fault, my brother died. How's your prayer life, right? Um, and, and I have had times in life where I have prayed to Jesus that boldly and that directly, this is your fault, you did this. And man, the response is awesome, because uh, Jesus does respond. And so, um, this is Martha. Uh, the other neat thing about Martha is that, uh, anybody know Martha's husband's name? Nope. Uh, anybody know her father's name? Nope. Because Luke did not mention it. To be written in the first century, to be written in 1950, right? To have somebody, a female, and he calls it her house, yet you don't know her father's name. That, uh, it elevates her position. She has a sister named Mary. And um, through John, we know that she has a sister, a brother named Lazarus. Now, we don't know when Martha refers to Lazarus as her brother, whether this is the way that Justice refers to me as his brother, which I adore, uh, is it that type of familial, or is it actually literally brother? But he doesn't say, Luke didn't say, Jesus went to uh, the sister of Lazarus's house, right? None of that. She is named, and so is Mary. And because of this, the church has done some really interesting things along the way. Uh, you already know about the monastic movement and how those things came up about it. Uh, there have been for um, way too long uh, people, theologians, who have written that Jesus was talking about uh, the manly role, which is to study and to learn, and uh, the, the women's role, which is to serve, uh, that Jesus was lifting one up over the other. Um, I don't believe that uh, at all. I don't think that's what he was saying. In fact, there's one thing that is being lifted up, and that is that Mary was doing something that traditionally in Jewish society in the first century in this area in Palestine where they were, uh, that she was traditionally doing something that a man would do, and Jesus invited Martha to do it. Invited. It. Called it the good thing. Our translation says better, Greek, good. She is doing the good thing. How is that with the church and how we invite women into doing the good thing? Makes me wonder. And so this is, uh, I don't know, it's fascinating to me about uh, Martha and Mary and their relationship with Jesus. But to get closer to the point, Jesus wasn't concerned 
about the busy Martha. Jesus was concerned about the distracted Martha. The distracted and the worried Martha. That's what Jesus focuses in on, not the busy side. I think Jesus focuses in on our distracted side as well. He did in the first century, and he is still thinking about us and our distractedness today. So Tom Friedman, he is uh, an op-ed columnist often written in the New York Times. Uh, he wrote one uh, called The Taxi Driver. I don't know if you remember this. It's about 10 years ago or so. Uh, he went to a particular town, big city, and flew from the, in, from the airport, took a taxi ride to where he needed to go. It was an hour-long taxi ride. And on that hour-long drive, the taxi driver talked on the phone three times. He was playing music, and at one point, he was watching a video, <laughs> to which Tom writes, it's rather disturbing in that type of traffic to have your driver watching a video. Meanwhile, Tom himself had his headphones on, he had his laptop open, and he was writing an article that he later called the taxi driver. What he points out is that these two people were in a cab for an hour and shared one word when he got in, two words when he left. Thank you. And later, he was reflecting on what does that say about our society that we are so distracted for a cab driver, again, multiple phone calls, some sort of video that he's watching, and music, he's smoking too, forgot about that part. Uh, and then Tom himself distracted by, he's got a, he has to write, he has a deadline, you know, he's listening to music to drown everything else out. Distractedness. So Friedman wrote about the internet age, our age, being perpetually distracted, mildly engaged. You might feel that way as well. For our brothers and sisters watching online, I'm very impressed because you have the power of the internet at your fingertips. Maybe I shouldn't tell them this, uh, but that uh, I am now competing with Netflix and everything else that's out there that you could watch, yet you have turned uh, to watch us. That says something. Busyness and distraction. This past week, on, Tuesday, on Wednesday, I had to leave our women's group at 10.30 uh, because I had to go into a diocesan meeting. And it is our yearly training. I am on the uh, Title IV committee, which is for, um, it's basically a clergy panel that if one of our fellow clergy gets in trouble, uh, they are referred to us and we can advise the clergy person and the bishop on uh, the ways forward. This is what I sit on. And I sit on it partly, a couple of reasons. Uh, no Saturday meetings, and, and we hardly ever meet at all, which is great, until we have to, and then it's not so great. But um, So this is our yearly training. Starts at 10.30. We broke at noon for lunch. We came back at 1, and we went to 2.30. And at 2.30, our chairperson said, please, for those committee members, stay where you are. We have some more things to talk about, and then for the last 15 minutes, we talked about an actual thing that might be coming to us. When we are worn out and distracted and like me, thinking of all the other things I could have been doing, to find out this is the main purpose that we are here. And so even the church can fall into this trap of being distracted. You know, the other joke, Ed, this is for you, is that, uh, this is a joke, that 90% of all things we worry about never happen, so that proves that worrying works. <laughs> it must, if 90% of the things we worry about don't happen. No, there's another way through this. There's another way. And that is the very hard part of letting go of our distractions. Um, do, do you know that there's 24-hour cable news, anyone? Um, do you know that news shows up on your phone 
Do you know that they send me messages saying, hey, you should tune in now. I'm like, ooh, breaking news, I should really watch. No, eh, it's nothing. But this constant distraction and then constant worry. That thanks to Martha, and thanks to Martha saying to Jesus, do you not care? We have this lesson. So if I can take this passage and if I can put it into the chapter and into this entire section that Luke is writing about, Jesus has done some amazing things. He has taken 70 people and he is now dispatching 70 people out to go out and spread the word and then they will return and tell him what they discovered. Jesus is, this is the beginning of the movement and it's not where he sits on top and tells everybody what to do, he is dispatching. It's this grassroots thing that Jesus is starting. And, and, and they are meeting at Martha's house. So for those of you that thought that this is Jesus and a few of his followers, or maybe this is the 12, it's the 70. 70 people at her house, 70 plus family, friends, children, goats. I mean, I don't know what else they brought, but they're all there. Get an idea of how big Martha's house is, that this is where they met, and that Mary is sitting at Jesus' feet absorbing the word. So what Jesus is saying, this is no Sermon on the Mount. This is no more blessed are you. This is, you are heading out, and here are your instructions. This is what I want you to do. These are the people I want you to talk to. This is how I want you to respond, and now I want you to come back when you're done, and we'll talk about it. These are the words that he's sending, um, and the, the Greek term for sending out is apostle. So apostolic church, we are the sending church, and Jesus is giving them words. So not only do we have an idea of who Martha is and her stance and position, we now know that Mary is one of the sent, one of the ones going out. Jesus is still talking to us, giving us his word about what we are going to do out there. And he warns about the distractions. He warns about the things that we need to be concerned about. But he gives us his word. And so the better part, as we are translated, or in my translation, the good part, is the sending, is the going out, is the bringing the word. And the more focused we are on God, and the less worried we are about everything else, the better that part will be. So today we have coffee hour, and uh, Ann Roberts has prepared some wonderful food. Uh, is the focus of our coffee hour the food? No. The focus is one another, connecting, telling stories, hearing stories, sharing your name, hearing other names. Uh, this, this weekly ritual and practice of sharing and talking. And, and the food is awesome, and I'm glad it's there. It's a very important thing. Uh, as is coffee and the rest. Uh, but the focus is on our interaction with each other and building up one another as we are sent out for the week and as Jesus calls us back here to return. And so for our coffee hour, for the chats that we have in the narthex as we're leaving, the chats that we're having online and the emails we're going to share this week, all of those things, the focus is on one another. And the focus is on being sent out and being a part of God's kingdom out there until we're called back again to talk about it. So may God find his presence and way into your life this week. May you turn off one or two, or maybe all the distractions. And so we, and I'm talking about me and my fellow pastors, and especially that 58% that say they don't have time in a week to do that, may we turn from that and sit at the feet of Jesus and enjoy the good part. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now turning to page four, I invite you to stand as you're able. And together, let us say the words of our faith found in the Nicene Creed. 
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. By the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray to God our Father in the name of Christ Jesus our Lord, making intercession for the Church, the world, and for all people according to their need. Heavenly Father, thank you for your law, our teacher, and disciplinarian. Thank you for the gospel of grace, forgiveness, and freedom in Jesus. Thank you for the Holy Spirit who sustains us to love one another. Bless this congregation, its people, and our shared ministry. Lord, in your mercy. Come, Creator Spirit, and renew the face of the earth. Bless this broken world until it conforms to the will of Jesus' love. Heavenly Father, we pray for our nation. Give our leaders wisdom and courage that they may be able to secure peace beyond their understanding. Help them to choose the right path when they make decisions on behalf of the nation and its people. Lord God, we ask you to be with all the people suffering in the Ukraine as the crisis in their country deteriorates. Be with those who are anxious and fearful and with those who have lost loved ones and are bereaved. Be with those who are injured and wounded. Comfort those who have lost loved ones and especially protect the children. Strengthen and guide all who risk their lives on behalf of others. Grant healing to the wounded, honor to those who sacrifice their lives, patience and hope to their families. And when they return home and unite, grant them dedication to help build a better world for all. Lord, in your mercy. Your Breathe health, wholeness, and hope into the hearts of all who suffer, especially Downs the Fourth, 
Holden, Brian, Tyler, Barbara, and Dan. Grant healing and recovery for Peg, for Frank, Sandy, Dave, Beverly, Bill, and Mary Jo. Give peace and strength for those going through cancer treatments, especially Jane, Downs III, Victoria, Alex, Connie, and Douglas. Visit and comfort all who are under the care of skilled nursing, and especially Timothy, Barbara, Kim, and Mary Ann. Be near to all who are in hospice care. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, we thank you for breathing your eternal life into all of the faithful departed, and especially those we name now. Grant, O Lord, unto our loved ones eternal rest, and let perpetual light shine upon them. And may the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Keep our hearts fixed firmly on you, the Lord and giver of life. Bring us with the whole company of the redeemed of every time and place and every nation, tribe and tongue into the joy and glory of your presence where we shall behold your face to face and adore you as creator, redeemer, and sustainer, our Lord and our God. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open and desires known, and few known from you, no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now with open hearts, let us pray together for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so what holds us by your spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you're able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So please be seated.
We're having our Martha moment up here. We're getting ready for communion, so we're talking about how it's going to work. So that's, uh, that's excellent. We'll, we'll give directions here in just a moment. So if you'd like to be seated, that would be great. Uh, are there any birthdays or anniversaries today? Any birthdays? Hi, Anne. Let me grab a mic. Actually, you're mic'd up there. But hello. Can you tell everyone your name? Ann Roberts. And? 85. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful Allison. I'm usually with my family, but I'm not this summer. And wonderful Allison is putting together, some of us go to the ballet, we're going to the historic circus and having a meal afterwards, so very special. Excellent. That's wonderful. And when is your birthday? Wednesday. Wednesday. Excellent. Good. Are there any other birthdays? All right, so let's put our hands together and let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for your servant. We thank you that you've given her a signpost and reminder of the grace and the love you give her all year long. And Lord, we thank you for her friends and for her family too. We ask you, bless her this day. Bless her on the anniversary of her birth and all the days of her life. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy birthday. All right, for anniversaries... Come on up. Now, as, as they're coming up, uh, if you look in your bulletin to where it says uh, at the back, where it talks about um, the uh, altar flowers are given in recognition, uh, I, if I am reading correctly, that is for your anniversary. Yes, it is. Good. The problem is we have a misprint in there, and it says you've been married for 70 years, and unless you got married when you're two, I don't... It, it, so that's, that's not a misprint. That's real. No, that's right. We <laughs> traded for a goat and a pig, and it was a deal. <laughs> Excellent. Happy Thank anniversary. That is fantastic. You. you are the first couple, I think, that has ever, I know, have celebrated a 70th. That is wonderful. Kind of scary, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and we think so, too. <laughs> nice. nice. That's excellent. So what is the day? It, Monday, tomorrow. Monday, tomorrow. Wonderful. Any big plans? Uh, yeah, well... Tonight, our daughter's having a big celebration for us, Excellent. which is nice. That's in wonderful. Lakewood Ranch. Wonderful. Good. All right. Any other words of wisdom that you would like to pass along? You know, it's amazing. <laughs> it is amazing. Hang in there. Hang, Hang in, in there. there. <laughs> it's hard work, but you know, yeah. but you have to work at it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's wonderful. We're pleased and happy that we've been able to have the health and the. Uh, funds to do so. <laughs> Live a good life. That's wonderful. Well, good. Well, now for a blessing. All right. So, Lisa, you have your hand here, your hand there, and then this hand there, that hand there, and then this like that. All right. You ready? Okay. All right. For tomorrow, let us pray. This is a church sandwich? This is a, <laughs> <laughs> this is a church sandwich. Okay. Yes. This is uh, focused on the one thing, right? The good thing right here. All right. Uh, Lord Jesus, we thank you that uh, the first miracle you performed was at a wedding in Cana of Galilee, where you turned water into wine. And Lord, you show you can turn our hearts to each other and to you. Lord, we thank you for this union. We thank you for the peace and the joy and the commitment that is represented here that is helping this generation and generations to come. Lord, we thank you. And we ask you bless them this day. Bless them on Monday and all the days of, your life, of their lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 You may kiss the bride. <laughs> I just have goosebumps. That is just awesome. I'm just so happy. Very good. Thank you. Nothing more important than today, right? So that is wonderful. Thank you. Okay, so for this week, we have um, the discussion group on Tuesday and Wednesday. And speaking of busyness, it dawned on me halfway through my sermon that I had not printed up the discussion group reading. So you'll have to find it online. Uh, it's on our website. It's in our tidings. Uh, if you show up on Tuesday or Wednesday, I'll have it available for you. And those joining us online, I always display it there as well. Uh, the reading is from, um, uh, from a man who... Uh, has, is practicing spiritual detachment. 
And the idea of this is to let go of our assumptions and the holds we have on th other things and to let God's will run through us. And so he said he did that with the passing of his dog when his dog was 15 years old, that he practiced spiritual detachment, that he got the dog, the thing the dog needed and the food, and then was able to let go. And then his sister got cancer and all of that detachment went out the window. And so he writes about it in a, in a very frank uh, and, and loving way. And so uh, I wanna talk about that. I wanna hear what you think about spiritual detachment, uh, especially for loved ones, and letting God's presence and spirit run as it's going to run. Uh, and this is one of those discussions where we, we talk more personally about grief and those things as they affect us. Uh, and so I, I'm looking forward to it. So as you know, we talk about really large global things. We'll talk about local things. We'll talk about fun things like UFOs. And then uh, we'll talk about things like this. So uh, this upcoming week, we'll be discussing that. And so whether you've had to let go of a loved one, whether it's a furry loved one or a human, um, love to hear about spiritual detachment and how we can live into that. And I really don't think there's any other place in society where we can talk about that openly and warmly, except in our uh, in church and our discussion groups. So uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, men on Tuesday, women on uh, men on Tuesday, women on Wednesday at 10 a.m. Both online and in person. Uh, are there any other announcements for the good of the cause? Uh, Kathy is at home watching us. Hi, Kathy. Any of you who are on my um, contact list, you know that I was hacked yesterday, <laughs> and not only once but twice. Um, and the family has been calling nonstop. And your sermon was very relevant because I thought maybe going to the monastery <laughs> would be very peaceful. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> Gail and Mike Clay even called and. One got the one asking you to buy something on Amazon, and the other one got the one helping my niece, who is in some far off country. And so please <laughs> disregard all of it. None of it is true. And the world is wonderful with the internet, but it can be very difficult, too. <laughs> and so sometimes we just want to get off. <laughs> oh, right, right. <laughs> I understand that. Uh, also, for anybody who has received an email from Marcy Goebel, she was hacked as well. And so, yeah, yeah. And I'm wondering if there's a, anyway. Um, so, if you get an email from anybody associated with All Angels that says, do you shop at, uh, at uh, Amazon? Do you use this type of gift card? Anything like that. Be very suspicious of it, all right? Please. Just, that's how they're doing these things. And so uh, despite the grammar and misspelling and all those things that I know Katsy would never do, uh, that just it's the, and, and they're gonna get better at it. And so we have to get better at, at standing apart from it. So um, we, uh, as a church organization, we will ask for money, we do that. And we do it uh, first in person, then we send it out online, and we're quite obvious about it. Uh, it's not about gift cards or any of the other things. And so, um, so from here on out, and what other organizations you're involved in, the universities and those things that ask for money, there are specific ways that we do it, and it's never through this way. So just, just bear that in mind. And Cassie, I'm sorry it had to happen to you, but it's a good discussion. Um, so the other discussion is, and I hate to bring it up, but it's part of a clergy thing that we did, and that is, if there was a fire that suddenly broke out right here, um, who here can point out where the exits are? Okay. Good, there are two exits. What about this way? No, because you run into that. All right, if some guy came in and you felt really uncomfortable about his presence here uh, and he was standing in the back, uh, where is your exit? Good. Uh, in that brief amount of time it took you to point, uh, please make that shorter. So make it very quick. Uh, and so I, I hate to bring it up, but this is the time that we're living in. And the chance of a fire occurring here or somebody coming in to make us feel very uncomfortable or worse, um, it's, it is present. Uh, it can happen. And this morning, I don't know if you saw, but Longboat, um, the police were out here uh, and they were at the temple as they are most mornings. And so just, it's just a thing. And it's just something for us to be aware of and to continue to be diligent of. Uh, and amongst all of this, I'm sorry, Philip, you're saying? 
What about the phone? You mean we have a phone here that we can call? <laughs> yes, okay, good. So what Philip and I are having fun with, um, can anybody point where the bathroom is? All right, bathroom's over there. Uh, if you're facing the bathroom behind you on the other wall, there is a red phone. Uh, and it's bright red for a very specific purpose. Dial 911, it has our address already built into it. And so you can use your cell phones, but um, I doubt any of you can pull off 563 Bay Isles Road quickly, right? Um, and the calls that we make on Sunday morning go to Sarasota. They don't know that Bay Isles is a, um, is a cul-de-sac. Uh, and so you're going to have to tell them, uh, just get me to Longboat, they know where we are. Uh, and because Sarasota is really confused about how this road works. Um, so, but as long as the police know, if it says All Angels, Bay Isles Road, they know exactly where we are. It's just that the folks, good folks in Sarasota answering the phone Sunday morning don't. And so you may have to go through a few extra steps to tell them uh, where we are. So, anything else, Philip? Did I do good? <laughs> good, excellent. Ah, let us now focus on the one thing. Uh, we're about to have Holy Communion, and we have um, two folks that have, are, are new to this, not new to giving out communion, but new to our intincting bowls. And so uh, Mary will be here, and Allison will be over here. And so what I'd like you to do is that they're going to hold the bowls, and if you'd like to receive the communion wine, I'll, um, uh, Reverend Maggie and I will be in the middle. We'll be handing out uh, wafers. And then if you would like the communion wine, uh, bring your wafer like this, and one of them uh, on this side, Allison, will take it, and she will intinct it for you and hold it like this, and then you can take it from her and consume it. Um, the body of Christ cannot be divided, so if you receive wafer only and not wine, you still have received full communion. If you would prefer uh, instead to have a blessing, put your arms together like this, and you will have a blessing. So, Reminded me, Reverend Maggie, you are leaving for uh, a month? Next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. Yes, okay. So three Sundays. Three Sundays. Starting next Sunday? Yeah. Or this coming Sunday? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, okay, good. <laughs> we'll get our calendar straight. So if I can have your hands real quick. Lord, we thank you for your servant. We ask you bless her as she travels. Uh, help her to reconnect with her family and all of her loved ones and bring her home safely. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And the Epshaws, too. Yes, the Epshaws are traveling as well. So, let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and a sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. (laughs) 
Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Turning to page eight in your bulletin. Together, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us 
as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and with all those you love forevermore. Amen.